Hi, everyone, and welcome to the breakout session on privacy-enhanced collaboration with AWS Cleanrooms. We will be discussing AWS's new Cleanroom service that Adam announced yesterday during his keynote. I'm Shyla Mathias, Senior Business Development Manager for AWS Cleanrooms focused on advertising and marketing. I'll start this session with an overview of the new service, what it is, why it was created, how it works, the use cases will support for our AWS customers. Next, Ankur Agarwal, Principal Product Manager for AWS Cleanrooms, will walk you through a demo so you can see the service in practice. After, we will hear from an AWS customer, Comscore, a leader in media measurement and analytics. Brian Pugh, Chief Information Officer, will share how he sees Cleanrooms fitting in and solving challenges for Comscore and their customers. Last, we will wrap up and share informa more information on AWS Cleanrooms. Let's start off with a, a quick audience poll, get everyone moving a bit more after three days at reInvent. Um, my first question is, whose company has faced challenges in securely collaborating on data with entities outside of your enterprise? And if you can just raise your hand. Okay, I think I see 75% of hands up. Um, my second question is, um, who knows what a data cleanroom is? Maybe less hands than that, 50%. Uh, my, my final question is, whose business has tested or is currently using a data cleanroom? Maybe about 15 hands. So I think we have the right audience for this session. I'll begin with the AWS landscape, the, the landscape AWS customers are currently navigating. As they want to collaborate with, on, on shared data with a vast amount of partners, but face significant challenges. Data is siloed across business units within an enterprise with different standards and approaches being developed. This creates interoperability and scale challenges in being able to incorporate past insights into future business goals. And companies have an unprecedented amount of data. According to market intelligence firm IDC, it is estimated that the amount of data created over the next five years will be greater than two times the amount of data created since the advent of digital storage. And while consumers value relevant experiences, companies are faced with challenges on how to better manage how data is collected, stored, and used to protect consumer privacy. As an example, an advertising and marketing customer came to us and told us they want to better understand their advertising effectiveness and customer behavior by running analytics on data they own combined with their partner's data without either party revealing or sharing their raw data with the other. In light of these challenges, we created AWS Clean Rooms. AWS Cleanrooms helps advertising, financial services, and healthcare companies easily and securely match, analyze, and collaborate on combined data sets without sharing or revealing underlying data. With AWS Cleanrooms, customers can create a secure data collaboration in minutes and collaborate with any other company on the AWS cloud to generate unique insights around advertising campaigns, investment decisions, and research and development. Any AWS customer can achieve the service's benefits through its unique features, supporting Collabor multi-party collaboration for up to five members in a single collaboration, minimal data movement through direct permissioning of data tables from a customer's Amazon S3 data lake to the cleanroom collaboration, easily configurable privacy controls restricting the type of analysis allowed on data, for example, only allowing aggregate statistics with a minimum output. The option to pre-encrypt, so only encrypted data is used within the clean room, even when the analysis is being run. And the opportunity to automate and integrate AWS clean room technology into existing workflows to create your own white-labeled clean room. 
For the purposes of today's session, we're going to focus on how AWS cleanrooms can help advertising and marketing customers, given the specific challenges that brands, media publishers, ad technology, and measurement companies are facing. Let's take an airline as an example. A brand marketer at an airline wants to know which of their ad creatives that ran on the media publisher's platform led to the most ticket sales. The publisher wants to provide that insight back to the airline so the airline can determine which creative was most effective in driving those ticket sales. And ultimately, the airline can invest more in that creative to deliver more effective and personalized messaging to their customers. But neither the airline or the media publisher wants this to come at the cost of consumer privacy, nor do they want to move what can be terabytes of data, given the time it will take and the risk in data exposure. AWS is uniquely positioned to help with this customer ask, with 15 years experience working with all the critical entities across advertising and marketing. Brands, agencies, advertising technology companies, data and measurement, media publishers, and divisions of Amazon have data workloads on AWS. They are using Amazon services to help with business challenges around first party data management, advertising intelligence, and digital customer experience. These entities are already working with each other's shared data, but that process isn't ideal. There are compromises as it relates to data privacy, security, and data usability. One party is sending data to the other with a legal doc governing usage, or companies are creating their own custom solutions which take development time, resources, and constant upkeep or companies are turning to third parties, which requires data movement, increasing the risk of data exposure. AWS Cleanrooms offers an easier, quicker, and more secure solution. Let's talk through a high-level architecture of how AWS Cleanrooms works using that airline and that media publisher as an example. The airline wants to perform measurement analysis using their own data and the media publishers, with all parties keeping their data in their own respective Amazon S3 data lake. In a few clicks, the airline can initiate a collaboration inviting that media publisher sending the invitation to their AWS account. The media publisher receiving the invite can accept. Once accepted, they are prompted to associate data to the collaboration. They can configure and associate any data tables from their Amazon S3 data lake, specifying their privacy controls, which are called analysis rules in an AWS cleanroom. Once the analysis rules, including output constraints, are set, the media publisher can complete association of their data to that collaboration. The airline can configure and associate their own data from their own S3 following the same process, but determining their own specific analysis rules. Please note that associating data to a collaboration does not mean you are moving that data from your Amazon S3 data lake. Rather, you are giving AWS Cleanrooms permissions to allow the query to run as long as it meets the privacy control set by each data owner. Once all members in the collaboration have completed association of their data, the airline in this example can start running their analysis, the output going to their specified S3 bucket. That analysis can be visualized or used for, for further analysis. AWS Cleanrooms drives business value for all members in a collaboration. In my example, it offers the airline interoperability in analyzing their ticket sales that's stored in their Amazon S3 data lake against the media publisher's exposure data stored in their Amazon S3 data lake without either party revealing the raw data to the other or moving their data from their own respective Amazon S3 data lake. 
For the airline, this translates to specific insights into what media placements or ad creatives are driving ticket sales to help the airline make more efficient media investment decisions in the future, benefiting the airlines and customers with more personalized advertising. For the media publisher, AWS Cleanrooms creates a new, more secure and monetizable offering for the airline and any other brand or agency customer of that media publisher to extract their own insights without directly accessing the media publisher's raw data. Although we are focused on brands and media publishers in this example, AWS Cleanrooms can provide business value for all AWS customers, including other advertising and marketing personas. You will hear more about the benefits for other entities such as measurement companies very shortly in this session. I'm now going to turn it over to Anker for a service demo so you can see some of the reviewed use cases in practice. Thank you, Shaila. Hi, everyone. I'm Ankur Agarwal. I'm a product manager supporting AWS Clean Rooms. Um, and I'm really excited to show you AWS Clean Rooms in action. For the demo today, we have an airline who is launching an ad campaign for its frequent business travelers on a publisher's platform. They're trying to glean two types of insights that requires data from both the parties. Pre-campaign, they would like to understand how many of their users are, that are business travelers are also active on the publisher's platform recently. And post-campaign, they would like to be able to understand uh, the creative performance and see which creatives are leading to highest sales. In order to do this, they will need their data in Amazon S3 Data Lake, and the publisher will associate impressions data and users data, and the airline will associate its ticket sales data and, and their customer data in, from their CRM systems. To recap what Shaila demonstrated earlier, we'll have four distinct steps in, in, in how we will go through the demo today. The first one would be that one of the collaboration members would initiate a collaboration and invite the other member to join the collaboration. Once the, all the members have joined the collaboration, they would need to uh, create what is called a configured table. A configured table is a first class resource in uh, AWS Clean Rooms, which holds the reference to your, uh, to your Amazon S3 data source, as well as contains analysis rules that determine exactly how your data would be used inside a collaboration. I'll talk more about it during the demo. Once each member has created their configured table, like in this case, we'll have four configured tables, uh, they would then associate it with, uh, a, 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 with an AWS Clean Rooms collaboration. Uh, once that association is done, then the member that has the permissions to query the data will be able to query the data using uh, either AWS Clean Rooms APIs or through the AWS Management Console. All right, so then let's jump right into it. Right. So the first step is for the airline to um, create a collaboration and invite the publisher. I'm currently in the airline's account in the dark mode. I'll go ahead and create a collaboration. I'll give it a name and I will give it um, a description, the same description. Um, next, I will add the collaboration members. Um, I'm airline co, and I will add social co. Um, and what I would need is the AWS account ID of, um, uh, of the publisher. So I have it here, and I'm going to go ahead and add that here. Uh, for the purposes of this demo, we have two collaboration members, but AWS Clean Room supports up to five collaboration members. For example, you can have third-party data measurement companies, identity providers, or even multiple publishers. Each collaboration member can associate data, and one collaboration member can run the analysis. So in the next step, I will select who will be the collaboration member that will be running the analysis. In this case, it's the airline that's looking at extracting the insights from this analysis, so I'll go ahead and select the airline. You can then select whether you want to enable query logging for the collaboration. If enabled, detailed logs of the queries, including query text, is sent to um, AWS CloudWatch, which is the centralized logging and monitoring service for AWS. 
each collaboration member gets to pick this setting for their own while joining or creating a collaboration so that they get their copy of logs uh, for the data that re references, uh, for the queries that reference their data. I'll go ahead and enable this and say yes. Finally, um, what I have is cryptographic computing for AWS clean rooms. Um, so this allows you to pre-encrypt some or all of your data before even associating it within uh, an AWS clean rooms collaboration. If enabled, AWS clean rooms will run the queries on encrypted data based on the parameters that are selected by uh, the collaboration creator. For the purposes of this demo, I will disable this and go ahead and create this collaboration. So once done, I can see that collaboration has been created and an invitation should have been sent. I'm gonna go and move ahead to the publisher account in a lighter mode. Um, so let's reload this to see if an invitation has indeed come through. All right, I see campaign planning and I, I open the collaboration invitation and I can see that um, all the details around who the, who the invitation is coming from, whether or not cryptographic computing is enabled, is query log supported, and who exactly are all the members. If everything looks good, I'm gonna create uh, a membership. Uh, as a collaboration member contributing data, I also have an option to enable query logging. If I enable it, logs for queries that reference my data tables will be sent to my AWS CloudWatch service, which is separate from the one that uh, the airline had configured. So I'll go ahead and say yes and create a membership. Um, so this concludes my first step of creating a collaboration. We have a collaboration um, now with two members in it. I can go and see it in the members tab and um, both the members are there. You can see that there's no data in it yet. There's no data that has been associated with it yet. The collaboration, um, I'll, I'll, the next step for me would be to create a, a configured table using the impressions data that is stored in Amazon S3. I'll go ahead and select that, and I can select the glue catalog that, uh, that is used to generate the schema. I'll go ahead and select this. I'll look at, uh, I can also view the schema right from within the console. So I'll go ahead and look, look at that. It contains the identifier, impression state, ID. All of this looks good. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and move to the next step. Uh, I also have an option to allow list all the columns in my underlying AWS glue table or only allow list a subset of these. This allows me the flexibility that I can use the same underlying AWS glue catalog without having to create a new table for every single combination of the columns. For the purposes of this demo, I'm going to select a lot of these including creative ID, campaign, they look good. Um, Impressions ID is something that's actually internal to my system, so I'm not gonna uh, in, allow list it for this configured table. Uh, I'll leave the other details as is, and I'm gonna go ahead and create a, a configured table. You can see that a table has been created, but it is not yet enabled for querying, and that is because we haven't yet specified how exactly it will be used within a clean room, including, and what type of queries can be performed on this table. So we will go ahead and do that using the create configure table, uh, create analysis rule workflow. Um, and I'll <clears throat> so analysis rules conf is configured in three steps. First, you select a query template to specify what are the types of uh, queries and analysis that you want to run within a collaboration. Second, you configure fine grained column level controls uh, on the data using query controls. And finally, you select um, output constraints. Uh, AWS Clean Rooms provides two flexible query templates. The first one is of type aggregate. Aggregate template allows queries that output aggregate statistics, such as counts, sum, averages, um, on, on collective data. This can be used to support use cases such as reach, measurement, attribution, or even finding the, the overlap of the user segment, which we'll be, we'll be doing in our use case today. Um, the second is of type list. Uh, list allows queries that output row-level row data for the overlap between the data tables from different collaboration members. List can be used to enrich data with additional attributes by combining it with a common match key or output a list of IDs that can be used for activation. For the purposes of our demo, we are looking for aggregated insights, so I'm gonna go ahead and select the aggregate uh, template. So the next step is for me to configure query controls. We sp start with specifying exactly which functions can be used on which columns. 
within this configured table. For my demo, I know that the airline wants to measure the size of the over overlapping segment, so I'm gonna allow count distinct of that, of identifier. I can also select other aggregate functions, such as some dis averages or, or some of the other functions, but for the purposes of my demo, I only need count distinct. Next, I can specify join controls to control whether this table can be joined directly by the, uh, by the airline without them having to join with their own table, or do I only want to allow them to, uh, or do I want to require them to have an inner join? Uh, I want to enable the airline to only perform analysis on the intersection of the data, so I'm gonna go ahead and require uh, a join uh, for this analysis to be performed, and I will select the identifier as a join key. Um, so I'll go ahead and select that. Uh, next, I can select which columns do I want to make available to be used as dimensions in the analysis. I know that the airline wants to understand the creative performance, so they'd want to group by the creative, so I'm going to go ahead and enable that. I also know that they'd want to be able to use impressions data as filters in their queries to better attribute and have attribution logic, so I'll, I'll, I'll enable that as well. Uh, finally, I can also select a custom list of scalar functions um, or allow all supported scalar functions. I'm gonna go ahead and, and allow all of them for, the, for this demo. The last step in the analysis rules configuration workflow is aggregation, is specifying aggregation constraints. This allows you to automatically filter out rows that do not meet a certain minimum threshold for aggregated numbers. This can be used to further mitigate the risk that information about a small group of individuals would be released through the analysis. For instance, if you group the data by US uh, states uh, for a specific query, some of the larger states like California may have a large number of users, but some of the smaller states like North Dakota may have a small number of users and you may want to protect that information um, in the analysis. So for the purpose of this one, I'm gonna use it on, uh, on identifier and select a value of 25. Um, so that concludes the analysis, uh, analysis rules workflow. I can review all the details and uh, go ahead and create configured table. All right, I can see that it can now be used for querying, which means that it can now be associated to a collaboration as well. So I'm already on my third step. I'm starting to associate tables. Um, but before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead to the uh, collaboration. I'm going to say con associate table. I can select my table that I just created from impressions, and I can review the schema to make sure everything looks good. I can see that um, the join column is indeed the identifier, and um, I'll leave all the details as default. I'm gonna go ahead and say associate table. In the background, what AWS Clean Rooms is doing is, is creating a, a scope down IAM role uh, to get read-only access to this table only when the queries will be run. At this time, there is no data that is moving. Um, so we've created the, uh, we've associated the first table. I also created a few configured table already using the same analysis rules workflow so that I don't have to do it four times in this demo. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. I'm gonna show you the users table. I can see that it has some attributes, uh, including country, the aggregation, the analysis rules specify identifier as the join column. Everything looks good, and I'm gonna go ahead and associate this one as well. And at this time, we are just giving information to the AWS Clean Room service that this is where you go look for data when, you, when a query is actually initiated. Um, so this association will take a couple of seconds. All right, so we are done from the publisher side. We created a configure table, created analysis rules, and um, uh, associated both the tables. So we're ready to go back to the airlines, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna refresh to see whether this data shows up in the collaboration. Uh, and indeed, uh, there are two tables in the collaboration, and you can see that um, those two have been associated. I'm gonna go ahead and associate the first party data now that I have from the airline side, including the ticket sales and the CRM data. So I have those two tables that I configured earlier, and you can see, uh, we can see the schema here, and it has a lot of rich details about the price and uh, the transaction ID and, and a lot of um, other columns that would be used in the analysis. Uh, I can see the analysis rules, and I can see that the join column is again, uh, is of type identifier, uh, and 
I also am allowing some in this case uh, on the price so that I can understand the revenue impact. Um, so I'll go ahead and associate this table. It'll take a few more seconds and then we'll be ready to associate our last table. All right, so we have three tables in this collaboration and we'll associate our fourth one now, which is going to be the airline CRM data. So when go ahead and select that, and I can see that it has a lot of rich information about whether, whether or not the user is of type business and, and, and a lot of other demographic information about the user. Um, again, this is my first party data. I'm still configuring analysis rules, but I'm configuring it in a way that is more permissive. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and say associate. Uh, it should be another second or two. All right, so we have our collaboration. All the data has been associated. And since airline is the one that is, in, that is running the analysis, we have a queries tab as well. So I'll go there and I can see on the left-hand side, right alongside my code editor, I can see that the analysis rules um, are configured. The airline uh, tables do not require uh, a, uh, an overlap because again, it's my first party data. I can see all the information about which are the join columns, what are the dimension columns. I can see here that the publisher requires a join. And again, I can see all the details of how an analysis rules have been configured for this table as well. Uh, the last step is for me to specify the S3 bucket for where I will send this, uh, the output of this, uh, uh, the queries. Um, so I have something called ACR demo that I created earlier. I'm gonna select that and we can start running queries now. Um, so I have something that uh, I had created, written earlier. So let's try this particular query. Why don't we try to um, output a list of identifiers from this analysis? So I'm gonna try to do that, and I'm gonna try to say uh, by joining the two tables um, of customers and user. As you can see, it has been immediately rejected by AWS Clean Rooms, and that is because um, the analysis type is of type aggregation, and we are trying to output row level information in this, uh, in this query. Uh, let's try to do something else. Um, let's try to query just the publisher's table. So I'm gonna comment out the other part, and I'm gonna try to find the count distinct, which is an allowable operation on the identifier, um, and I'm gonna try to run this without a join. Um, let's try to do that. And uh, when we do that, again, it has been immediately rejected, and that is because a join was required by the publisher. Um, and this can only be, um, only the queries that have a join will be allowed in this, uh, in this collaboration. So let's try something that might work. Let's try count distinct. Okay, we need to fix that syntax error. Uh, but as soon as we do that, we run it again, and we can see that the query has been accepted, and it's running. And it's gonna take some time for it to run completely. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to another collaboration that has results from the same queries, um, and a couple other queries run um, from earlier. Um, as you can see here, this is the number of users that are common between um, frequent airline, frequent business cl class travelers on the airline and those who were recently active on the publisher's platform. So th this gives me an idea what my addressable user uh, segment size is for this particular campaign. As you can see, we are, um, use, you can again see all the information from the analysis rules window. Uh, I can also use other types of queries, like I can group by the creative, uh, and I can run the analysis by joining the impressions table. And here I can see that some of the uh, value-oriented ones are not working that well uh, in terms of driving sales, but the aspirational one is working particularly well. Um, so this kind of helps me inform um, you know, the types of creatives that I want to build. Uh, I can also for instance, do the sum of price to understand what was the total impact of the revenue that was generated as a result of this ad campaign by better attributing it through a where clause where I'm making sure that uh, the impression occurred before the sale was made and, and I can get more specific there as well. So analysis rules really allow you to write a lot of different types of queries within the constraints of what's defined. And because the data is in S3, you can really very easily plug it into analysis, analytics, AWS analytics tools such as Amazon QuickSight and, uh, and SageMaker. So here I've plotted 
um, the graph of the impressions and the sales that they're driving on a daily basis. And this really helps me better visualize the, the relationship between the two. I can also easily visualize how the creatives have been performing. I can slice it by daily, weekly numbers to, to understand how the creatives have been trending. Assuming the same exposure, uh, I can see that certain creatives are doing better than the others. So that really concludes our demo today. Um, as these are just some of the examples of how you can use AWS Clean Rooms to extract insights from collective data without, without sharing raw data or moving it outside your, your AWS account. We're really excited to put it in your hands and hear about all your interesting use cases. Although I went over the console today, the entire process can be automated using uh, every uh, operation that I performed on the console today is, will be available through AWS SDK, through APIs. And this entire process can be automated using AWS ETL tools for uh, automated data ingestion. You can use AWS Clean Rooms APIs to create and manage collaborations and run the analysis. And you can easily feed it into analytic services such as Amazon SageMaker for machine learning or Amazon QuickSight for better visualization or Amazon Redshift for advanced analytics. We're really excited to hear about all the things that you would do with AWS Clean Rooms. Thank you for being here. Uh, I would now like to invite Brian Pugh from Comscore to talk about industry trends and share about some of the ways that they're excited to use Clean Rooms. Thank you. <clears throat> Am I on? Can you hear me okay? All right. Hi, everybody. Nice to see everyone here. Uh, thanks, Anker, and it's a pleasure to be here. Data clean rooms are uh, an area that I have a lot of interest in. Um, I'm CIO at Comscore. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what Comscore is and some of the changes that we're seeing. I mean, there's, there is massive change happening very quickly in the media space, and that's where Comscore operates. We'll talk about a clean room use case that we designed uh, that is very illustrative of how we would use this type of technology. And then, um, you know, the, the types of offerings that data rooms can help us implement. Um, so who is Comscore? We are a media ratings company. So we provide uh, different ratings around how many people are visiting websites, what is the total reach of an advertising campaign, uh, how many people view television. We're a digital ratings and TV ratings company and also movie ratings. And, you know, if you read about like, what uh, the top movies were this past weekend, it's probably Comscore numbers that we're using. We are in the business of measurement. Um, and uh, our data is used for things like planning an advertising campaign or how can I possibly reach the best audience. You know, we're a neutral third party that can provide those insights between advertiser buyers and publishers who are selling inventory, uh, and then evaluating that. Uh, was the campaign successful? Did I reach, reach my audience successfully? Um, the thing with measurement, though, with all of the, I mean, it's huge. You know, the most media used to be before the internet was TV and radio. And you didn't need a whole lot of data, or it's as much data to be able to measure but there's so much cardinality, so many niche audiences, so many different ways to consume media, that collaboration really is how we work with the industry in, in, in order to be able to provide measurement. Um, so we, we know media companies capture a, a lot of data about their audiences, and they have analytics data about people interacting with their websites. Uh, we integrate data with MVPDs for television, and we have uh, billions of measurable events and impressions every single day that we ingest to measure. Um, and uh, the collaboration piece is absolutely critical, but one of the things that's happening uh, is you know, more awareness around how that's being done and how measurement's happening and people don't want to be tracked and, and things like that. And that's really where data clean, clean rooms can, can help out. We're doing an audience analysis, what type of audience brings context to the measurement. It's not just counting impressions. 
Uh, how many, you know, are you reaching your target audience? Are they, uh, you know, are they in, uh, auto intenders? Are they intending to buy a car? Are they, you know, uh, mothers? Those types of things for demographics are really important to advertisers. And then how do you reach those people? Where do they spend their time? Where are they engaged? Uh, where are they most likely to uh, interact with an advertisement? Um, the, the data that we ingest is, you know, uh, pretty much, you know, if you interact with different websites, and I'll show an example in a second, there's a measurement that's sent to Comscore. Um, that is the collaboration. We work with different media companies, and they provide, they integrate Comscore measurement, and that, that measurement is ingested, and we use that to create insights. Um, and we combine this with first party data that Comscore has, panel data. We recruit people around the US and the world uh, uh, to interact with us as part of the panel. We offer incentives, we get to monitor the behavior, and then we integrate that with all this other data, which I'll call census data. That census data is data we're getting from media, uh, from different media companies. That is how we provide the context. That is the data that we're joining together. Um, today, we do that all on, on our infrastructure. Um, but as we put these pieces together, there's some sensitivity around how that's been done in the past and how we need to move forward. Uh, we believe at Comscore that privacy is a right that should be supported. So if there are things that artifacts of advertising technology that consumers are uncomfortable with, how do we adapt measurement so that we can provide to our customers what they need to be able to do media planning, uh, evaluate audiences, and respect consumers as far as you know, uh, what they would like to have happen uh, when they engage with these different media properties. So this is the way what we call unified digital measurement works today. We have a panel. We can observe everything that's happening uh, for integrated devices on that panel. Uh, it's all opt-in, people join it. And then we have uh, our, our census network, which are measurements that are integrated all over these different media properties. And we actually merge these two. We have an intersection of what our panel sees and what it comes through the census data. It's a tiny percentage of all that data, but we get all of the census data as well. We add that up. We have methodologies, algorithms that turns that into a rating. We use our panel and other data sources to tell us the context, what type of people are interacting with that media. And then this is the type of report that we provide. This, the scale is huge, right? We're basically trying to measure ratings, audiences for the entire internet. Um, so that's why we're ingesting so much data. Uh, we're, we're reporting on tens of thousands of websites. We're reporting on all national, local television. Um, and so that's where the integrations, a panel cannot do this on its own. So we collaborate, we work with our media partners. They want us to work with them so that we can provide the most accurate measurement possible. And we're also a neutral third party. We're treating everybody the same. That's really important. Uh, as far as media goes. Buyers want to trust that the measurement is representing everything without bias. So use cases um, for buyers or uh, agencies and, and uh, advertisers, reaching their target audiences, evaluating different sites, competitive sets, those types of things, uh, and expanding their reach. Like how do they reach the most possible people uh, for an advertising campaign? And then for publishers, it's really around benchmarking. Uh, how, what is the size of the audience? How do they compare uh, to the rest of their category or who they're selling against? How do they um, show that their audience has a lot of value so that they can increase the value of their inventory? So what's changing? Um, measurement needs to be privacy forward in that um, things like cookies and mobile ad IDs uh, are advertising technology artifacts that are commonly used in measurement. They're used for analytics, you know, they're used for integrations, they're used for counting, um, and Comscore has used those in the past. Uh, that has been a trust or a way to be able to measure these things with accuracy. 
But there is sensitivity, right? The, the uh, consumers, uh, governments have started to realize that there is a lot of power in that data and it needs to be protected. Uh, it cannot be misused. So um, not all measurements opt in, right? So how do you make it so that we can work with our partners and they feel trusted? Or they feel that they, the data that, that we're in integrating cannot be misused. But we do have to support collaboration. There's so much fragmentation. It is impossible for a measurement company to measure everything by itself and have it be great. Uh, collaborations where it, uh, it all comes together because we can see exactly what the, the media companies see and we can integrate that into our measurement. And that gives the best possible result. All these integrations though are very, there's a lot of friction, there's a lot of different integrations and um, we want to be interoperable, we want to go where our customers are going, but there's a lot of ETL happening, there's a lot of, you know, if we're sharing data, uh, server to server, let's say, we, you know, we could, uh, we are integrating at a lot of different points. And something like a data clean room, like you, you want it to be where our customer's data is, just to reduce all that friction, so we're not moving data around and having to absorb all those costs. And, and then, you know, that's where the interoperability comes in. Like, you know, how do we operate where our customers are operating? Reduce all of that, that, that friction. So clean rooms can enable these things. So they can enable ComScore to provide the best possible measurement, can enable our, our data partners to trust that the data that they're providing is safe and protected. So the way data sharing works with ComScore today, this is just an example of a pixel tag that's sitting on our website. We have them all over the web. Uh, what, the, what it's doing is sending just a little piece of information uh, back to ComScore that says somebody visited ComScore.com. And uh, there's, a, there's an HTTP header that has cookies and all of those IP addresses and all that stuff in it because that's you know, uh, how the internet works. And that's also some of the elements that we use in the measurement. We also work with a lot of companies on server-to-server -server integrations where they're pushing that type of data to us. Um, and that's happening in a lot of different ways. FTP, S3 integrations, I mean, uh, whatever our customers are comfortable with because we're interoperable. Um, uh, I, I will go back for a second. I mean, if you look at our whole AWS pipeline, um, we're using CloudFront as our CDN, and we're ingesting everything through AWS and just landing in S3. And then we're running analytics on top of that to create our results. So our data is already there, right? So, um, and in this case, it's the same thing. We're integrating data maybe S3 to S3, uh, and then uh, we're, we're then putting that into our data lake, and then we're creating reports um, or our ratings um, out, off of that on the AWS infrastructure. So in a clean room, if, if, if you think about that server-to-server -server integration where uh, a company might be providing uh, data to us through an S3 bucket, um, and it has all those things that uh, they might not be comfortable sharing. You know, there's a lot of uh, um, uh, data like you know, cookies, first-party IDs, um, uh, IP addresses that are useful to connect to our panel so we can provide that context. But if in a data clean room environment, we can actually do that merger uh, inside of the data clean room, and then those sensitive elements never need to leave the media, the data partners um, infrastructure, right? We're just getting, we're gonna run an analysis, we're gonna get the pieces we need to perform our ratings measurement, and then that's gonna be the result. So this is how it'll work. And this was the test that we designed. Uh, because we have all these elements, we have those integrations on websites, and we have our panels. So we can find a key that would be the same key that we might use with a media partner, right? Which would be, let's say, a, a, a cookie. And then instead of um, us ingesting all that information and doing all the analysis all on, behind our firewall, we can join those things in the data clean room and then get back what we need. Let's say it's a, um, an aggregate. A, a good example of the type of aggregation that we would do is a, uh, a media company may have 
demographics on their side. Comscore has demographics because of our panels. And we can join based on the intersection of our panel with the media company. And the, the media company will have their demographics, we'll have ours. We can create a matrix, which is basically like an error correction matrix that we can use to integrate in our measurement downstream. That's, that is one really good example. And then to get the rest of the measurement, it could be sent to us without those uh, sensitive uh, keys, um, or it could be provided in aggregate potentially. Um, so, and that would reduce the amount of data that's being uh, ingested. Um, so this is a, you know, uh, an example uh, similar to the one Ankur went through. Uh, you know, when I looked at this, if it looked and felt like Athena, you know, you're writing SQL, you've set up a configuration based on which party can have access to what, and you can run SQL on it. And if I just added a demographic to that statement with a group by the demographic from the partner and, and uh, uh, from our Comscore panel, that I could create that matrix I was talking about. And I never see the keys. I never see what the intersection is. I don't know which data, uh, um, uh, or I won't need to see all the data from the, uh, the, from the media partner. Or we could create a list. We could join our panel to that information. We could pull back at the row level, at the panelist level, information that might be useful, but we wouldn't need, all, we wouldn't need like, the sensitive keys uh, associated with it. So we look at data clean rooms like a, uh, they're absolutely necessary for the future of measurement. Um, uh, we want to find solutions like Amazon's data clean room, which are where our customers already are, and then we can scale that. Uh, one of the challenges Comscore has is scaling all of these integrations um, and as, as our customers' needs evolve around which data they can share or will share. Um, and we want them to trust that the information that they're providing to us is, is exactly what they're willing to provide and uh, it's gonna be used in the right way. They can set up the uh, configuration um, and then we can automate in, uh, ingesting that data or the results of that um, data clean room queries um, and that will eventually reduce friction. We can standardize those things and we can approach these integrations with literally thousands of media partners. Um, and um, you know, the types of things we can do, I talked about the validating the data, the demographic data sets. That's a really good example of something the Comscore panel does very well. Um, we can standardize and scale uh, these types of integrations. Um, and then, you know, we can, Comscore can offer things back. You know, we can help with predicting uh, what type of audience uh, could be on the publisher site by basically sending the data back to them that we're comfortable sharing. We're also not uh, really willing to share who our panel is. That would be uh, bad for Comscore, right? But we can share uh, insights back to, to, to our customers. And we'd like to do that and, and do that in a way that, you know, is easy for us and for them, um, but also provides that, that privacy and security that uh, everybody requires. So I'm gonna invite, um, I, I just kind of summed all of this up. I'm gonna invite Shyla back up to close us out. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brian, for sharing perspective on how you see cleanrooms fitting in and bringing value to both Comscore and your customers. Um, we focused a lot on advertising and marketing throughout this session, but the use cases for AWS cleanrooms can extend broadly to other industries as well, such as financial services as well as healthcare. Before we wrap, let's review AWS cleanrooms benefits for AWS customers one last time. Create your own clean room, add participants, and start collaborating with a few clicks. Collaborate with hundreds and thousands of customers on AWS without sharing or revealing underlying data. Protect data with a broad set of privacy enhancing controls for clean rooms. And use flexible, easy to configure analysis rules to tailor your queries according to your specific business needs. 
The service will be available in preview in a few weeks. You can get more information on our website. The URL is listed here. And on behalf of Brian, Anker, and myself, thank you very much for attending our session and your attention, and enjoy the rest of your event.